All right, everybody, welcome back. And in this step, we're going to be talking about the goals of social influencing. So let's take a look. Let's, let's pretend that your boss or your client or you're sitting there thinking about your own business and the thing that you want to accomplish is that you want more engagement on your social channels or on your blog or things like that. So your boss asks you, it's like, hey, we need more engagement or we need more website traffic. How are you going to affect that as a social media marketer, right? Um, or your client says to you, I need more offer awareness. People don't know, you know, if you, if you hear somebody saying something like, you know, I have this great thing, but I wish people would know about it, right? If they knew about it, they would buy it. Right, so that, that's an offer awareness problem. Or if you're sitting there as, as a small business and you're thinking, I've been hearing all, a lot about this retargeting, which I'm gonna cover here towards the end of this video, uh, retargeting, but I've been hearing quite a bit about retargeting. I need to be doing more of that. Um, you are in the right place, okay? Doing social influencing is where you wanna be, is uh, if, if you're looking to increase engagement, grow your traffic, all right, increase the, um, the amount of people that are aware or the, the amount that they are aware of your products and services. Or if you're looking to grow your retargeting lists, you want to be setting up a social influencing program. All right, so let's talk about increasing engagement. What do we mean by that? Well, you know, if you look here, um, you know, you've got, you've got people using content Remember that social influencing is a lot about using the content that your content team creates or that you create in your content marketing capacity to spread around the information that creates authority and trust for you and your organization. So look here at what Pet Plan Insurance is doing by you know, providing a useful, valuable piece of content about how to protect your pet from the dog flu outbreak. So there's a dog flu outbreak, right? The dogs are getting sick, right? And, and, and some of them are even dying from, the, from, from something like dog flu. Pet Plan has a product that's associated with that. They offer pet insurance. And so they create content around that and they just go on their web, uh, or on their Facebook page and they link to their website and say, hey, are you interested in learning more about how to protect your, your dog from the flu, right? And indirectly, they are educating their market about a problem and that they have the solution for it, or at least part of the solution for it, which is A, how do you protect your, your, your dog from getting the flu in the first place? And if you do get the flu um, and, and your dog needs to be hospitalized or whatever, uh, that you have pet insurance and you can get that through us, all right? So um, you, you've got uh, Rosetta Stone here on the right. You know, um, Oftentimes, you will see on Rosetta Stone's channel, you will see on their Twitter channel, somebody will come out and say, hey, you know, I'm learning a new language. I can't believe it. It's crazy with Rosetta Stone, right? And they'll tag Rosetta Stone and, and Rosetta Stone will come back on and say, hey, well, well, what language are you learning with us? And then the person will come back and say, German. You know, uh, in this case, said uh, German. I, I was supposed to take an online class through my school, but they couldn't get me in. And Rosetta said, what, made it, what motivated you to, to learn German, right? So you can see that there's engagement between the brand and the customer, right? Where they're actually showing interest in one of their customers and why they want to use their product, right? So information might come to light in this conversation that needs to be routed to the content team. It may need to be routed to to the product team, all right? So somebody might say, well, I really wanted to learn, you know, Hindi, but you didn't have anything on Hindi. You know, I, what I was really wanting to learn was this. Or, um, you know, they might start to volunteer information as to how you could improve the product, things like that. When you increase engagement, good things happen on the social web. Not to mention, how much more likely is this customer to come back and either recommend Rosetta Stone or buy another product because people often learn multiple languages uh, or, or get interested in language as a whole, right? So they learn two, three, buy multiple Rosetta Stone product, products. How much more likely are they to do that when there's been this level of engagement, this conversation that's gone on on the social web? So increasing engagement. Um, now, increasing website traffic. The same thing happens here. You see Lowe's here saying, um, hey, are you not sure what plants will thrive in your garden? Now, as we shoot this uh, right outside here of the studio that we're shooting this in, it's beautiful. It's, it's getting to be 
uh, uh, into the summer. And um, you know, you've got you know what people out there building gardens and putting out flowers and all the fun things that you do uh, out in your yard and, and Lowe's knows that and they want mind share all right they want you to know they want you to know that they have an offer which is you know plants and soils and things to build planter gardens and all the things that Lowe's sells around people that are interested in gardening they want that mind share they want that wallet share eventually but they know that in order to get share of wallet, you need to get share of mind first. All right, so they create content like, hey, are you not sure what plants will thrive in your garden? Well, uh, build, uh, build with confidence with this guide, right? So they create a guide of things that will work in your garden. And then it's, again, the implied, oh, and by the way, we sell all the plants and soils and fertilizers and all the things that you need to do to do this. Lowe's is very, very progressive with their, both their social media and their content marketing and they're a good company to study. Because uh, as you see here, you've got a, a click coming out of Facebook onto a blog post onto Lowe's.com and you've got you know, your blog post here, Choosing Plants That Fit Your Climate, a Regional Guide. It's a brilliant piece of content for Lowe's to create and to distribute using social influencing on all of their social channels. Uh, increasing offer awareness, all right? All of these things that we've talked about are sort of indirectly increasing offer awareness, right? Maybe you didn't know that Lowe's has a garden center, all right? Maybe you didn't know that Rosetta Stone teaches German, or maybe you didn't know about Rosetta Stone at all, right? Or maybe you didn't, maybe you didn't realize that there was somebody out there that actually even offers pet insurance, that it's even a, that it's even a product at all, right? And so you, you end up seeing something about dog flu and you're a dog lover, right? And so you see something about the dog flu and, and you respond to that because you're like, I love my dog. I don't want my dog to get the flu. And, and then you realize, holy cow, like, there's, there's such a thing as pet plan insurance, uh, pe uh, pet insurance. So almost everything that we're doing at the influencing level, whether it's creating content or, or, or distributing it through the social web, is designed to raise offer awareness and raise awareness of what we do as, as, as an organization. But here's a great example of Rosetta Stone uh, using Pinterest to raise offer awareness. So you know, you've got all these pins about language, right? So all of it's relevant to what they do. So a lot of it's about um, either uh, language directly or it's about things that are indirectly related to, to language like international travel or uh, international business and things like that. They're pinning all kinds of stuff like that in their uh, Pinterest profile. But look at, you know, look at this uh, example uh, here on, uh, you know, with uh, pet plan here where we've got this person, you know, saying this is actually a retweet of something pet plan put out that says, hey, we just paid an insurance claim for a Bernese mountain dog who swallowed a corn cob, right? So it's kind of, kind of engaging, right? That, you know, oh, wow, this dog swallowed a corn cob, you know, watch those canines at cookouts, right? Good use of content to to let people know what kind of offers Pet Plan has. And then it was such an interesting way it was brought up that this guy actually goes out there and retweets it, right? Now on the bottom left, you've got uh, Cleveland Clinic here on their YouTube channel, just doing a, um, putting information out there about heart bypass surgery recovery times, all right? And that somebody that's in, that needs a heart bypass surgery might choose Cleveland Clinic, right? But not, you know, remember that we talked about how social influencing is indirect sales, right? So you just want people to realize that Cleveland Clinic is an authority in, has built trust with other people. There's social proof around Cleveland Clinic in the area of, in this case, heart bypass surgery. And so you've got this, uh, you know, minute 52 uh, video about this woman and, and, and her heart bypass surgery and her recovery time and all those things. And you've got 2,200 views of that, right? And they put that out there um, to let people know, hey, I want you to know we do heart bypass surgery and we're actually pretty darn good at it, 
okay? And, and this person thinks uh, that we are too. So really good use of content um, and, and social media to raise offer awareness. Now look again down here where we've got, you know, I, I brought back this, this, this uh, Facebook update on Lowe's Facebook page where, you, again, you may not realize that Lowe's sells plants and gardens and garden stuff and all that. So, you know, all of this is meant to not only entertain and create value for, for customers and prospects, but also to sort of indirectly let them know, hey, we do this stuff for a living, okay? Now, the last one I want to describe to you in terms of goals is that we want to be growing retargeting lists, all right? So, this is the stage where I'm going to, I'm going to teach you a little bit about retargeting and then we're going to talk more about it later on. But retargeting is something that has, has really been a real game changer in terms of digital marketing. And that is because what we can do today is we can take clicks like these where somebody is interested in gardening, all right? Obviously interested in gardening because they are uh, interested in what plants will thrive, okay? So no one's gonna click on that unless they have an interest in gardening, okay? So you click on that, you come over here, and you consume this content. Well, what we can do as marketers today is we can actually create lists of people that visited this page and then retarget them with relevant advertising that will get them to move further down into a marketing and sales funnel. So if we take a look at how this actually works, you know, on the left over here, what we have is traffic. Okay, so traffic could come from anywhere. It doesn't matter where it comes from. In this case, it was, in this case, it was Facebook, but it could be anything like AdWords or YouTube ads or email or uh, search, right? Somebody could go on Google and just search like, you know, where, which plants will survive in my climate, right? And they might end up on a blog post like this from Lowe's, okay? But in any case, however they arrive isn't the point. What's the point is what happens once they do arrive, all right? So let's walk through an example of how we did this at Digital Marketer. So we've got a blog post here called How We Grew a Blog from Zero to Six Million Dollars, okay? Anybody that is interested in reading this blog post is obviously interested in blogging, okay? And so what we do is we drop a, what, what you would call a pixel or a cookie, you could call it a cookie if you like. Um, a lot of people know that term more than a pixel, but it's actually called a pixel. And when we drop that pixel on their machine, we are actually able to follow up with them in that advertising networks like Facebook, like YouTube, like Google, all right, so we can find other networks where we are able to serve ads based on whether or not somebody was on this page. And that's very powerful because we are able to segment and understand, you know, hey, this person's interested in blogging, you know, this person's interested in gardening, okay? And we are able to follow up, show them relevant ads that will move them through a marketing and sales funnel. So if you look here and you go over to Let's say, go back to the front end of this flow, where we've got, uh, let's say a visit comes in from Twitter. Okay, so they come in from Twitter, you put a, you put a tweet out there that said, hey, you know, uh, come check out this blog post about how we grew a blog from zero to six million. We drop a cookie on your machine that indicates that you're interested in blogging. Then you, that person goes back to Facebook and that's when we would make them the right offer, right? So we can actually set up social ads that will say, hey, you know, do you have writer's block? First of all, I know you're interested in blogging because you went and read this content, okay? Do you have writer's block? Would you like to boost your content with these 212 blog post ideas? And if they click on that, then they're going to be taken to a relevant offer, all right? So in this case, we are gonna make them an offer for the ultimate list of blog post ideas because, hey, I know you're a blogger, I know you're interested in blogging, would you like 212 blog post ideas? And if they click on that download now, they're going to be asked into their email address and then we've got ourselves a lead, all right? So this is actually starting to get into quadrant four where we are social selling, we are, we are generating leads, but it all starts with your influencing, okay? It starts with creating a piece of content 
Distributing it on the social web, in this case, we drop the cookie and then we retarget. We'll be talking more about retargeting later on in this certification, so don't worry too much about it right now, but definitely conceptually you need to understand what retargeting is. Now in the next video we are going to be talking about the different tools you're going to need to do social influencing. We'll see you in the next video.